The RBS-15 is one of the pioneers of anti-ship missiles in the West, featuring turbofan engines. It has undergone continuous evolution over the past 40 years and has maintained its effectiveness. With its new Mark IV Gungnir variant, the missile is set to remain in service for many more years. As the weapon detective, we're now investigating the RBS-15, the Swedish ship hunter. The RBS-15 is not combat-proven, but it's still accepted as one of the most effective anti-ship missiles. It can be considered as the standard western ship hunter in the Baltic Sea. Although Sweden now offers its new variant, the RBS-15 Mark IV Gungni, earlier versions can still appeal to new customers. The events that led to the development of the missile trace back to the 1940s. As the tension between the western and eastern blocs continually escalated after the Second World War, Sweden recognized the necessity of reorganizing its armed forces and prioritizing locally developed innovative systems to uphold its neutrality. As a first step, the design work for the RB315 anti-ship missile began as early as 1949, drawing on German V1 and V2 rockets that had crashed on the Swedish coast during the Second World War. Its first trial took place in 1953. HMS Holland launched a Robot 315 during a test in 1955. By 1959, a total of 86 firing trials had been conducted. Nevertheless, the results were unsatisfactory. As a result, Sweden developed the RB08, which was based on the French Nord Aviation CT-20 target missile, manufactured under license by Saab. Following successful trials, the Swedish Navy equipped two Holland-class destroyers with this anti-ship missile in 1966. Consequently, they became the first Western surface combatants fitted with such armament. However, the Defense Act of 1958 had a more decisive impact on the creation of the RBS-15. Through this act, Stockholm opted to prioritize the Army and the Air Force while significantly reducing the Navy allocation in the defense budget. Fast attack craft would gradually replace major surface combatants in the anti-surface warfare role and submarines would become the backbone of anti-submarine warfare operations. However, due to the requirements for launch rails and a missile magazine, the RB-08 was unsuitable for small vessels. The results of tests conducted on a play-up class torpedo boat equipped with the SS-10 and SS-11 missiles in the late 1960s were not satisfactory. Consequently, the Navy would decommission its sole missile-equipped warships within the next 20 years, leading to a significant reduction in capability. Sweden needed a new anti-ship missile. In the early 1970s, Saab introduced RB-11 Dolphin, equipped with a radar seeker and turbojet engine. Although the test firings were successful, the program was ultimately discontinued. By 1978, Sweden began commissioning Huygen-class missile boats fitted with Penguin missiles, locally designated as the RB-12. However, due to its limited range and small warhead, this Norwegian ship hunter failed to meet the requirements of the Swedish Navy adequately. Therefore, Sweden contemplated acquiring the US RGM-84 Harpoon missiles. However, Saab had already been developing the 3.73 kN Mikvatubo TRI-60 turbofan engine variant of the RB-04 since the early 1970s. Its offer, called RBS-15, was significantly more capable and sophisticated. In 1979, Sweden selected the RBS-15 and signed a development agreement with Saab Bufosh Missile Corporation, for whom Saab acted as the prime contractor. The initial contract was for a ship-launched weapon, but also included options for air-launched and coast defense versions. The development process was extremely rapid. Firing trials began in 1982 on the North Shopping class boat HMS Piteå. The same year, Sweden took up its option on the air launch version, the RBS-15F. In 1983, Finland ordered the missile's ship-launched and coastal defense variants, becoming the first foreign customer. These export versions are designated as RBS-15 SF-1 and RBS-15 SF-2 respectively. Their local designation is MTO-85. Saab completed the development of the ship-based variant in 1984 and it became operational in 1985 under the name of the RBS-15M. 
In 1986, Saab and Bufoch established a joint venture, Saab Missiles, which is now known as the Saab Bufoch Dynamics and has subsequently assumed responsibility for negotiating all contracts for the RBS-15. The same year, the first air launch test firing of the F variant took place from an AJ-37 Vigan. Sweden also considered a submarine launch version, but the project was ultimately found unfeasible. The RBS-15B is the export variant for Yugoslavia. Croatia now operates all of them following the country's dissolution. The initial production version is the RBS-15 Mark I. In 1994, Sweden signed a development contract with Saab for the RBS-15 Mark II and also announced that all its existing missiles would be upgraded to the new standard. This work was completed in 1997. The RBS-15 Mark II incorporates a greater use of stealth materials and displays a lower infrared signature. It also features a new multi-purpose digital computer with enhanced processing power, improvements to the seeker's hardware and software to boost both detection and electronic counter-countermeasures performance, as well as a new fire control system. As a private venture, Saab simultaneously conducted a parallel program for a new generation RBS-15 with the new TRI-65 turbojet and Dancer JP-10 fuel dramatically extending the range. This program was initially aimed at the export market and was briefly known as the RBS-15 Mark IIX. The letter X refers to export. It was later redesignated as the RBS-15 Mark III. It differs externally by featuring foldable wings and a reduced radar cross-section. Furthermore, the previous arrangement of control surfaces, which comprised of two fixed and two movable surfaces at the front, is replaced by four movable surfaces at the rear. Whereas the previous versions utilized a hydraulic actuation system, the RBS-15 Mark III is equipped with an electrical one. It also includes a fully digital autopilot, an inertial measurement unit, a wave adaptive altimeter and an enhanced seeker. Germany selected this version for its Braunschweig Corvettes, becoming its first customer. Saab produces the RBS-15 Mark III in cooperation with the German DL Defense Company. In 2017, Sweden ordered the variant, the RBS-15 Mark IV Gungni. Also produced in collaboration with DL, this version features anti-jump GPS capability, an extended range, a more effective seeker, and a lower weight. Algeria, Bulgaria, Croatia, Finland, Germany, Poland, Sweden, and Thailand have already chosen the RBS-15. The RBS-15 has a length of 4.35 meters, a diameter of 500 mm and a wingspan of 1.4 m. The launch weight is 780 kg for the Mark I and Mark II, which increases to 800 kg for the Mark III. It features a 200 kg high-explosive blast and pre-fragmented warhead with an impact proximity detonation mechanism. The Mark I and Mark II have a range exceeding 70 km, which expands to 200 km for the Mark III and 300 km for the Mark IV. The missile attains a top speed of Mach 0.8. The Mark I and Mark II variants are housed in a lightweight alloy container with a loaded weight of 1,540 kg. As the launch rail is positioned in the top right-hand corner, the missile is installed at a 45-degree angle to the vertical. The RBS-15 Mark III is housed in a new launcher container which differs from its predecessor by having an oval cross-section with the missile hanging from the top rather than from the side. In combat mode, the system features preparing and firing sub-modes, with the former enabling the automatic and or manual selection of target data, missile readiness, tactical parameters and salvo numbers. The distance that RBS-15 will travel during the high-level cruise phase is selected separately. The system then calculates the missile's heading Seeker's parameters, tactical boundaries, and the time until it enters the low-level cruise phase. The launch is conducted at an angle of 21 degrees by the boost motors, which burn for approximately 3 seconds before being jettisoned. The system compensates for the motion of the ship. As the RBS-15 reaches its maximum altitude, the turbojet is activated and the missile turns toward the target, with the maximum offset being about 90 degrees. It subsequently enters a predetermined high-level cruise phase, enabling it to overfly islands before descending into the low-level cruise phase. 
The J-Band 9GR400 monopulse seeker in the nose boasts high electronic counter-countermeasure performance and can operate in either active or active passive lock. Once it locks onto the target, the missile can then enter its terminal C-skimming phase at a height of 1 meter. The seeker algorithms can discriminate between ships, decoys and other countermeasures. During the terminal phase, the RBS-15 conducts a series of up to 8G controlled random low-level maneuvers intended to counter the prediction algorithms employed by close-in weapon systems. Possesses a multi-directional attack capability and can re-engage targets that have been missed. The air-launched RBS-15F can achieve a range of approximately 90 km and a speed of Mach 0.9 when released from a high altitude. The missile can sink any vessel weighing up to 6,000 tons and can permanently disable any larger vessel. The RBS-15 Mark IV Gungnir will possess enhanced land attack capability. As previously mentioned in our Meteor video, a conventional rocket motor of a missile loses energy during the final phase of its flight, which diminishes its evasive maneuvering capability. Furthermore, the aerodynamics of such a design necessitate extra thrust during both ascent and descent, resulting in faster fuel consumption and subsequently reducing the range. It is ill-suited for a sea filled with numerous islands, islets and rocks. On the other hand, the turbofan engine and broad wings of the RBS-15 provide high maneuverability at maximum range, which is a critical capability in the Baltic Sea where countless islands, islets and rocks are located. Thus, it is not surprising that many nations in the region have opted for the missile. The RBS-15 is a hybrid of the RB-04 and RB-08, combining the aerodynamics of the former with the flight principles of the latter. However, the RB-08 was equipped with a turbojet engine, resulting in higher fuel consumption and an elevated infrared signature. Naturally, the Swedish engineers reviewed the existing anti-ship programs when they designed the RBS-15. Rocket engines powered the earlier Exoze variants and the Harpoon. On the other hand, the Italian Automat was equipped with a turbofan engine. The Swedes swiftly recognized the value of this design and incorporated it into the new missile. Additionally, by utilizing new production materials, electronics and fuel technologies, Saab has ensured that the RBS-15 remains up to date. Finland has replaced the RBS-15s on the Hamina-class vessels with the Gavial Mark V. The RBS-15 Mark IV Gugni variant might have competed with this Israeli missile, however, it was not ready when the modernization works took place. The M2085 AMS, equivalent to the RBS-15 Mark II, was clearly outdated, while the Gavriel Mark V was significantly more advanced than the Mark III version. Therefore, the result was not surprising. Although this missile has never fought in combat, today no one doubts its effectiveness. With its Mark IV Gugnir variant, the RBS-15 is set to remain as one of the best anti-ship missiles for a considerable time. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.